episode of Sleeping Giants, Red Star Belgrade. Now, in our last episode, of course, we were sadly knocked out of the Champions League 6-1 on aggregate by Chelsea. And I guess, you know, we can't really complain. Um, it was poor. We were poor. But then we're still, that's two years in a row now that we've qualified for the knockout stages of the Champions League. We are getting somewhere. Our coefficient is going up. Uh, the country's rating is going up. Everything is going up, basically. And this is going to help us in the long run uh, as we start to build this club for better things. Plus, we're sort of really quite getting through seasons now with the way that I'm doing the back end of uh, the seasons. It makes it much easier for us. And it means we can really bomb through these at times. Like, you know, I've done quite a few games in this episode, as will I do in the next one, just to get this part done. Um, because it's just not particularly very interesting for most people I wouldn't have thought at the moment. You know, it's just one of those things. Right, so things to go over before we actually get into this episode. Firstly, I'd like to apologise for my pronunciation sometimes. Like, I don't speak Serbian, and I'm probably butchering it, but I really am trying. And, like, as much as I appreciate pronunciation tips, please don't act like I should somehow be able to speak Serbian when I don't. And I can't get everything dead on because, again, don't speak the language. So I really am trying. Um... I'm picking it up as I go along, but it is quite difficult, um, some of the names to say. So, yeah, just cut me some slack on that one. Um, also, we need to look at the Serbian national team. Um, some people wanted to see where they were in terms of... Uh, so let's just see if we can get to it. I'm trying to think how the best way to get to the country bit without actually clicking on anything useful. Here we go, Serbia. So, they're 20th in the world at the moment, uh, which they've actually gone up. It was 24th uh, when I checked it at the start of... Uh, before I did any games this episode, people wanted to see the Serbian national team. So here we go. Uh, the Zivkovic at uh, Schalke, uh, Juricic at Benfica, uh, Milanovic at Sampdoria, Savic at Genk, Filipovic at Sporting, uh, Maximovic at Udinese, Subotic obviously at Dortmund, uh, Mandic at Standard Liège, and we've got Sufedic and Militic, both from us of course. Uh, Savic, who I'm guessing is related to the other Milinkovic Savic, Sergei and Vanya. Are they brothers, twins potentially, maybe? Um, are, he's at Man United. And we've got two more from us Ristic and Jovic, of course. Uh, Pedrag Rajkovic, of course, our former goalkeeper, is at Lille. Uh, Nikola Antic, of course, is in there as well. Uh, a guy called Milan Yevtovic from Maccabi Tel Aviv is interestingly in the squad as well. Uh, Marko Pekovic, of course, former Red Star player as well, although he plays for Twente now. Uh, Urus uh, Spajic. Is at twenty? Oh no, he's not. No, he's at Toulouse. Apologies, it's quite a long way across. Uh, Nastasic, of course, from Manchester City. Uh, Skepovic from Dinamo Bucharest, uh, the former uh, Partizan player. Uh, Jojic from Dortmund. Hmm. Uh, Dimitrovic from uh, Karpaty Liv, and are they? I think they're Ukrainian, if I remember. Uh, and Nemanja Guderi uh, from Schalke. So a couple of Schalke players in there. So we've got a few. We've got. Five? Yeah, five players in the first team squad, which isn't bad. And I think the under-21 is much more... Uh, well, we don't have the right stats for that. But yeah, so there you go, guys. Um, Let's jump straight in, because there's quite a few games this month. So, we started off against Mladost. And bear in mind, we were still defending an absolutely absurd run at the mo uh, of games, basically, having not conceded a goal since, like, the 11th of November or something like that. It had been a while. Uh, we'd had six consecutive clean sheets in the league, basically. And we managed to make it seven clean sheets in a row. Now, this one started off just fine. We scored a goal 20 minutes into the game. Things doing what they usually do. Jovic's ball, Militic with the finish. 1-0 up at this point. Unfortunately, Darko Lazic decided to get himself sent off for a two-footed stupid tackle, basically, um, around about the 30-minute mark, which meant, of course, I had to go on defensive um, just to make sure we got the clean sheet in the win because they weren't too bad after that. Jovic did miss a penalty late on, though, so there is that. But it kept the uh, clean sheet run going. If you look here, we had, yeah, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Yeah, the last time we conceded a goal was actually the 24th of October. And we have finally conceded a goal, though. Um, in our next game, we played against Kolut uh, no, sorry, Kolubara in the Cup, away from home. I, I played a slightly rested side. I mean, they got a lot of injuries in this game, unfortunately, for them. And a red card, too, which didn't really help them on this one. Um, we just, yeah, we were better. And Adamenko with the ball in there. On the rebound, put in by Luka Jovic for his 28th goal of the season. Luka's had a good month, and he really does seem to be hitting good form. I think he could probably get 45 in all comps this year, which is pretty impressive. Um, as you can see, we were clearly the better team, but they did actually equalise. And I'm not all that surprised. It was a nice piece of play from them. Because, let's face it, you know, there's a reason why they got to the Cup semi-finals. Some poor play from us here. 
and a lovely little overlapping run and a really decent finish from Pabulic. Just good stuff, one all, and I was a little bit worried because I did think, you know, it was so early in the game, we hadn't had that many shots yet, but thankfully my worries were sort of put to bed not long after that. I wanted to get a good win here so we could rest players the entire squad for the second leg. Zivkovic's ball in, flicked on, and it's cleared away. It was very nearly straight in from that, basically. But Antic, again, this time, very nearly losing it before winning it back, of course. Kofi has played quite a few times this month, and I tell you what, I'm actually starting to like him prefer him over China at the moment because he just seems to have really slotted in well. Lovely ball around the corner there and Dusan Zivkovic puts us back in front again just two minutes after the equaliser. But as I say, Kofi's been really solid this month. He's not scored, but I think he's got himself quite a few assists. Jufedzic there with the free kick in. Flicked down by Toshka. A little bit of a goal scramble for Luka Jovic getting in there again to score his 29th goal of the season. Genuinely think 45 is not out of reach for him this year. And you'll see why as we see later into the month. We had one more little sting in the tail. 62 minutes in. Uh, this is a great piece of play from Bukhari. Really sort of good solo effort. Just goes past one, gets himself into a good area, takes a touch and just good strike from the youngster. You know, he's not had many chances in our first team. I think he got one goal for us last year but he's got one in his first appearance of the season for us so that was always nice and a 4-1 win to take back to the Maracanã. In our next game we had our first real slip up um well I'll say first real slip up first real slip up for quite some time and I can yeah basically they played a weird system we weren't really that good and as a result of that it was a pretty fair result when you look at the clip cut chances of anything they could have had even more they were very very good I actually ended up switching just to try and make sure that we didn't lose the game because they really did start to come out. So they didn't create many shots, that's what I would say. Antic with the ball in, and Jovic getting across his man to score number 30 of the year. And we were really up against it at this point, so I thought it would be wise to just make the changes, but unfortunately they did manage to score a goal. And bear in mind, this is the first goal we've conceded since late October, and it's now March. So, yeah, poor defending and a great strike from Dimitrich. Can't knock them. You know, it's a great goal. Um, just poor after seven consecutive clean sheets in the league to go and concede like that, but it happens. And it's still only the one goal, so there isn't too much problems with that and as you'll notice though uh two more clean sheets in the league after that keeps things going nicely um in our next game we got straight back into good fortunes and we really have started to find goals in us now i think little things that have been corrected in the patch have made our defensive side even stronger and our attacking side better because the things that you want the players to do they now actually are doing and it's really really showing um this one we got a goal after just 17 seconds Militic, just, i mean literally direct from the kickoff i don't even think that radnicky touched the ball uh before we scored a goal against them adamenko has been amazing this month as well oh no maybe they did no they didn't what we're talking about savicevic here cuts back inside all the way across and Militic with the goal through the goalkeeper's legs for one nothing red star number 17 of the year for him I think 20 is not out of reach, and that's more like what I want to see from our second-choice striker. We then had a penalty, which Jovic, of course, dispatches for number 31 of the season, making it 2-0 after 16 minutes. Things got even better for us, though, because we weren't done. Oh, no. We have plenty more in us. 26 minutes on the clock. Bajic's ball out there to Savicevic, who is nice to see him back. Uh, this was his first game back after injury, and he played an absolute blinder. Uh, I think he got two assists and a goal in this one. Just such a good player. Um... Playing off the left today, Milicic is around the corner and Jovic to make it 3-0 for his 32nd goal of the season. So Vitrich I'm generally using on the left at the moment just because Gajic is having such a lovely old time on the right. Um, just, yeah. 33 minutes in, of course, though, we had time to make it 4-0 and Ristic would look at this for a pass. You're going to see it in a minute. I think this is the goal. Ristic just spots Gajic over the top, Gajic with the run, one touch and bang. 4-0 on 33 minutes. At half-time, I actually threw it onto attacking because we were already 4-0 up. I wanted to see how many goals we could score at this point. You know, once we get 2-0 up in these games, I'm tempted to just do that just because I'm interested to see whether we can break those goal-scoring records. And of course, there was a goal for Vukan Savicevic because how could a game go by without him at least getting in on the action? 5-0 after 60 minutes could have been a lot worse. In our next game was the home leg of the cup, and I played a very weak inside. As you can see, Lukic, Adamenko, Bazan, Vera, Marion. I had a weird glitch, though, when I tried to do a quick pick for this game. Like, I did a full rotation, and for some reason it picked a team, but it wouldn't put anyone on my bench, and it refused to put anyone on the bench. I had to do a, like, pick player and put it on the bench. It was really strange, and it wouldn't put, pick fullbacks automatically either. It was really, really weird. Um, but it's fine now. I just don't know what it was for that game, but eventually I had to pick the team myself, which wasn't a big deal, but I just wanted to do a bit of rotation anyway. So this game basically comes down to one thing, and that is Adamenko. He, in situations like this, he is so useful because he just gets into great positions, and they just looked for him twice. The two, first two goals of this game all come down to him. Just wonderful play from him. He just gets himself into great positions. Now watch his run here coming along eventually. 
It might be one of these needlessly long highlights, basically. But he's just been so good at doing this. Uh, also, a game's good time to get Marianne into the squad a little bit. Um, I'm just going to move this down here a little. Uh, the reason that you'll understand why uh, later in the week, why that was up there. Uh, Militich, uh, yeah, Kofi basically was great. But Militich, what about that for a ball inside the channel? Adam then dinks it up and Jovic with the big header to make it one nothing. 33rd goal of the season. He just cannot stop scoring at the moment. Uh, I think he scored in pretty much every game we've played. Then just before half time, we scored a very similar goal, but it's the pass from Kofi to Adamenko in this one that I really enjoyed. Kofi does seem to have a good eye for a pass, and that's always nice. And it's important to have a player like that in our midfield. Uh, but we're also going to be missing Mahalo Ristic for a little while, so he might be getting even more game time here. But it's some of his, like, it's a lovely one of those sort of Barcelona star balls, the one inside the fullback. Like, there's nobody really there, but he still spots it, plays it into the channel. Adamenko, first time ball, and this time Militic with the header to make it 2 0 with goal number 18 of the season, which was good. Obviously, we had more in us yet, though, and that's always nice to see as well. Um, long ball played downfield, well headed away by Basin Vera. He and Marion just dominated there. Kofi again slips it into Zivkovic, round the channel, and Jovic to grab himself yet another goal, number 34 of the season. He has just been on fire this month. He's well over a goal a game average at the moment, and that made it 4 0, uh, 3 0, of course, 7 1 on aggregate dominating the game and just scoring as many goals as is physically possible and here's Kofi again on the ball he does I just like him he seems to keep that midfield ticking over nicely and keeps the play moving um we play well when he's in the team ball across here Militic to the back post and Bukhari actually scores in both legs of the semi-final here which is nice to see you know he's a player that joined us very early in this save and he's not really got much of a chance in the first team that that's basically it and then in our last match of the month we battered our record this is the biggest ever league win that we've achieved in this say the best before was that 7-1 and we also had a 7-2 in a live com i believe but this one this was a stop hit this was proper stop hitting yourself stuff i mean i was tempted not to even show you the highlights of this one just because there's so many goals but it just got worse and worse for them i mean seriously awful you i mean i thought we'd screwed up early on but, but as you can see like you know, they only had three shots in the entire game, none of which were on target. We had the 30 odd. But then before the patch, we wouldn't really be scoring as many goals with that type of shooting. So I think that it has certainly helped us, um, or it certainly feels like it has anyway. We feel a bit more clinical. Gajic here, down the inside, cuts inside on two of them, drops it back for Toshka. Toshka with a lovely pass out wide here to Antic, who first time Paul in is turned in at the back post by Milan Gajic. He was doing well for goals as well himself this year with his 10th of the year. Um, he's not quite as prolific as Savicevic, but he's a good creative player and I do like him a lot in that position. Now, just a few seconds later, let's say a few seconds, a few minutes later, uh, we, yeah, we kicked off the party really. Um, once that first one goes in, if you get it early enough, there's plenty of time for more. And oh my life. L look at that for Chufezic. Outside of the foot there, over the top, nearly got that one through, but he has another go in a sec. And this time it gets a better pass for Jovic, slips it through for Tosca, and that's a lovely ball. Such a great finish in the bottom corner. 13 goals that he's got this year. Um, he's wanted by Manchester United. So obviously he's like, his stats aren't like superb, but clearly he's a good player. And that makes me want to keep him even more. Jovic there with just a lovely touch to make that 3-0 there. But if Tosca, uh, Tosca is wanted by Manchester United, there must be something good about him. And he's really starting to prove himself to me a bit more now. He's getting more and more goals and adding, you know, to add 13 goals to your tally in a season where you're mostly going to be a second choice player, like he's always going to be generally the super sub kind of player. That's a decent amount. And hopefully next year, he and Militic can sort of rotate a lot more, as they kind of have this year too. And he'll probably get a chance to maybe get closer to sort of 20 goals. Because I think he's easily going to be a 20 goal a season player. He's sort of a... It's a great strike from Tufedzic there, by the way. Um, he's the kind of Mahatma Otu prototype player. You know, that role hasn't been played as well as it was by Otu, by any of our youngsters just yet. But I think it's only a matter of time before one of those guys has a 20 goal and 20 assist season. Genuinely, I think that one of them might even be able to do it this year, as you can see Militic making it 6 nothing, And Militic might be able to have a crack at it this year, but I think Mahat Otto got like 20-odd goals and 26 assists or something. So if someone could get 20 goals and 25 assists, I would consider them to have fulfilled the role. And as you can see, we were 7-0 up after 79 minutes. We had a chance as well to make it 8-9, and nine, but we blazed them over the bar. But there you go. So... You know, huge results there. And also, I think there isn't like, like nine clean sheets in ten matches now. Because we had seven in a row, then we conceded a goal, and then we had two more. We've only conceded one goal in the league in the last ten games. That is some progress, people. Right, let's take a little look at the squad before I show you the league. In fact, let's do the league first. Here's the league. We're still only 13 points clear, because Partizan have been decent this month, as you can see. But 80 goals scored in 22 matches. We're averaging nearly four goals a game. Um... And if we were to keep that up, 
for the rest of the season, we would score 112 goals, which would, would I think, actually beat that record. I just don't think it's going to be quite possible for us. Um, but you never know. Partizan in behind there, um, yeah, 13 points behind, and then we're 23 clear of Vojvodina. But Partizan have had a much, much better season this year. Like by, yeah, And I genuinely think that we might actually be able to beat our defensive record from last year of 16 goals conceded. You know, eight goals, uh, sorry, eight games to go, and three goals. We've only considered one in our last 10. You just never know, basically. You just never know. Um, so that's good. A plus 67 goal difference as well. I want to see if we can get a goal difference that's higher than our points tally. Um, I'm sort of just testing myself with little challenges in the league at the moment, just to keep myself entertained during the league matches. Um, so there you go. Luka Jovic has 36 now in 35 appearances. Uh, Militic has 19 and Savicevic has 14. Tosca in there with 13. Assists-wise, Savicevic has 17 as well. Uh, Antic has 14 now. Militic with 13 and Ristic with 10. As for player of the match, 8 for Luka Jovic. No big surprises there. Yellow cards, Bazan Vera with 8. Red cards, Bazan Vera, Ristic and Lazic all have one. Average rating, Nikola Antic still dominating that one. Well, not by far, not by much over Savicevic though. Aerial challenges, Bazan Vera. Key passes is, is, is Militic. That's what I like to see. Key tackles, 19 for Kone, which is pretty decent considering he's not actually played that much as a starter. Um, interceptions, 279. And of course, the most valuable player is Bazan Vera, interestingly. Right, without further ado, let's get into today's game against Partizan, because after all, you know, we couldn't not do Partizan. We've not done it for a couple of seasons. Now, they are better this year, I'll admit, but we should still be winning this. Like, we are completely comfortably the best player, in the, uh, best team in this division. So we should be winning this comfortably. Jovic, Milicic, Gajic, Savicevic... To Fedzic, Kofi. So I mean about him sort of getting in, like, my... Oh, is China not... Oh, okay. I must have accidentally unregistered China for the league when we were in Christmas break. That's a pain. That's why my assistant's not been suggesting. That's stupid. I might send him out on loan um, for the last part of the season just to make sure he gets some football. Antic, Bazan Vera, Lazic, Adamenko, and Stan, of course, in goal. That should be comfortably enough to beat them. Bear in mind, we've beat Partizan home and away in, like, the last two seasons in a row, I think. We certainly did last year. I think we won 4-0, um, which was quite a large result. But I also think that today a win is huge because it would put us 16 points clear then and within touching distance of the title very soon. And I also think that this and the Chukaricki game in our next match, although they're not the team they were, are pretty much all that is standing in our way in terms of going a season unbeaten. Like we've got eight games left, we're still unbeaten with 120 and drawn two. I think that if we can get through this game without losing and then and we're, ho we're at home, remember, and then get through the away game at Chukaricki, um then I think there's a really good chance of us doing the full season unbeaten. But then Sod's Law will bugger it up against Partizan today, which would just be horrible considering how well we've played this year and how poor they've been in recent seasons. That's a great ball into the middle there for Savi uh, from Savicevic to Militic. Gajic perhaps around the corner. He's picked it up anyway. Can he take a touch? And it's over the crossbar from Gajic in the first minute. And a good, not first minute, first five minutes. A good start for us, which is all we need to see. You know, even if we have to be a bit more defensive in this game when we, if we do get ourselves in front, we've certainly started this game well. Uh, Partizan have not had a single shot yet. Um, and we've had 10 already, but not a lot on target and only that one good chance so far. But hopefully this will continue into the rest of the first half and we can maybe... Mm, that last 10 minutes of play has been pretty poor. There's not been any shots in it. Partizan appear to have changed something, but whatever they've changed has not allowed them to have any shots yet. Um, as much as we've been the better side so far, it's not really showing... There we go. They finally had a shot. Um, Jovic now. Oh, what about that? Gajic just holding his line there. And Gajic with the strike and again over the crossbar. Two good opportunities for Milan Gajic there have gone missing, and we need to be doing a little bit better. I mean, the draw wouldn't be the worst result in the world, but I would like to win. Kofi with the long-range effort on the rebound. That's offside. Uh, Militic is definitely offside there, which is a shame. Um, but notice the rebounds still. <laughs> just still with the rebounds. Um, he's miles offside as well. And to me, the goalkeeper should be catching this as well. It's not a particularly difficult save, but Militic there on the rebound. But again, we're proving we can put it in the net. And in that first half, we have absolutely dominated them. And we're probably going to have to go attacking for the second half just to try to... Well, maybe not immediately, because we are dominating so completely that I'd like to see if we can avoid doing that, because it would leave us way too open. Um, I actually figured we'd have lots of goals in this game, but we maybe do deserve... We deserve to be winning, I think. Um, based on that first half performance, we've been the better side comfortably. I'd be disappointed if we don't win, having played like that for the entire first half. But we do need goals. And with the players we've got up front today, you'd think they, you know, they've got goals. They've got 50 odd between them uh, so far this year. Wait, more than like 55 goals or something between them? You'd think they'd be getting better. But hey, um, Moravac. 
Uh oh. I have a horrible feeling that they're going to score. Oh, what a block. That was great play from Bazan Vera. And a good chance there for Partizan, maybe. But he would have done well to get the shot on target from there just because of the great defending from Bazan Vera. Hmm. I'm still wondering. I think maybe 60 minutes. If we're still not ahead, then I might throw it on attacking because we're clearly on top. But I also don't want to get caught out because I know what this game's like. It likes to do that when you get a bit ahead of yourself. And I don't want to give it the opportunity. Um, Mihailovic. Stojkovic out wide to uh, Brasenats. Put, uh, that's a great tackle. Savicevic right. Now, Jovic, can, is there a ball over the top? Oh, man out wide. Gajic again. Please don't miss your third chance for the game. He's going to miss it, isn't he? That was a horrible first touch. But you see what I mean about players actually having those sort of touches now? The, you wouldn't That wouldn't have happened pre-patch. Players would just seem to have this ball on a string approach. And there it is. 1-0. It's Milutin Militic with his 20th goal of the season. And I couldn't have asked for a better man to score it. So he's managed to hit 20 for us this year. And that's that's pleasing. Was it Savicevic with the assist? Oh no, it's going to be Antic, isn't it? Uh, for another one. A 15th of the season. A lovely header from Militic. 1-0. Good stuff. Right. That's all we needed. Um, we're so drastically on top of this game that... Uh, if we were to grab a second goal, I would probably just shut up shop then. Um, just make sure we got the win. Militic, can he? Oh, no, not quite. Ball clear, but only as far as Kofi, who's just holding that role there. To Fedzic, can he find a pass through back to Kofi? Out wide, perhaps? Gajic, anyone else going to look out wide? Gajic is going to shoot, isn't he? Oh, what a hit. Making up for his earlier errors there to make it 2-0 to Red Star. And we are embarrassing Partizan a little bit. Not in terms of the scoreline, but, you know, look at the stats on this game. We've dominated, and it's just taken a little while. He ghosted through them there. It's just taken a little while for the domination to pay off. What a hit that is from Gajic. Um... Yeah, and that would put 16 clear at the top. Right, first substitution, probably about time we make it. Uh, I'm going to bring on Toshka, just because I like giving him some game time. Although, Jovic has not played well today. Let's put Toshka up top. On his own. Um, and Lazic is looking a little bit knackered and hasn't played that well. I just want to try and... I'm trying to rotate my defenders as much as possible, because we do have quite a few of them. And Kone is a very, very good interceptor and winner of the ball in the air, just because he is like 6 foot 11. Um, he's fucking huge. Ooh, right. I'd like to try and keep a clean sheet if we could, actually. So after this highlight, if they don't score on the highlight, then I might throw it on defensive just to make sure that we do get another clean sheet and keep this run going. Militic around the corner, perhaps. Gaic, can he pick out Toshka? Ooh, drops it back for Adamenko. Round a few people. Ah, he's lost out, but Gaic has come across again. Off the crossbar, Toshka on the rebound, and that is 3-0 Red Star. He plays like a poacher at times, but 14 goals this year is a very, very good return. I think he could maybe even get us 20 if he carries on like this. You know, what on earth is Adamenko doing there? Another good hit from Gaic, though. He's looking on fire today. But it comes back, and it's 3 nothing Red Star now. And, well, there you go. I mean, Derby wins are becoming very, very routine for us, which is always nice. Antic to the edge of the area. Have we got another in us now? Militic. He's gone through one tackle. Back out wide for Antic. Has he got a good cross in him? Ball across Gaic again. On the rebound, to Fedzic, and Andic has uh, pulled up, but we'll, uh, uh, we don't really have much left back. That's one area I really do want to try and find a good young player to come through in his left back area, because it is a bit of a, a weak spot for us. We're going to bring on G uh, Gavrich just to fill in there for a bit. Hopefully um, he's not too badly hurt, but that is now 4 nothing as to Fedzic makes it 4 Um Yeah, now they are starting to get a little embarrassed, because this is all second half play. Antic is ball in. Gaic with the strike again, well saved, but comes down and to Fedzic to slot in his seventh of the season. I think he's probably got ten in him this year for us as well. Um, another clean sheet would also be just delightful if we could get it. Lukats there, ball up, well won by Bazan Vera. That's going to drop down, but nobody's want to close it down irritatingly. I'd like to not concede a late goal here. Um, four nil looks a lot better than four one. So if you could do that, guys, that would just be delightful. Uh oh, 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 good save from Stan. Probably wasn't going in anyway, but it's nice to see him make the save anyway. And that would also still make that one goal conceded then in 11 league matches and 10 clean sheets in 11 games would be pretty much ridiculous. Um, you know, I want to little challenges I'm setting myself for the future of this league just because of the way things are going will be things like, you know, concede less than 10 goals in a season and stuff like that. Um, but that looks like it's going to be a comfortable 4 nothing victory for Red Star Belgrade, which is pretty much perfect. Um, it's also our second 4 nil over Partizan lately. I don't even remember the last time Partizan scored a goal against us, um, which is not all that surprising. Considering I expected them to do better than this today, I must say, I expected better from them, just because of how good they've actually been this season in comparison to what they've been like lately. But it appears that that was not going to be the case. So there you go. 23 matches, 84 goals scored. We're actually still on track. Uh, that was... the your four goals scored for the average there. Um, wow. <laughs>
Still only 13 conceded, 10 clean sheets in 11 matches. I just want to see how long we can carry that on for. Um, so there we go. That's now how the league is looking. We're 16 points clear of them and we'll be able to wrap the title up relatively soon. Now, in the next episode, we'll of course be doing the last game of the season because I'm pretty sure the cup final is before it. And the reason for that is because I want to hopefully have that last game of the season thing as, you know, us hopefully wrapping up an unbeaten season. Um, we've already done 30 games unbeaten because we got that... Uh, news item i think we're on sort of like 33 or something we've done over a year unbeaten in the league we'd also won 18 straight cup games so i think we're going to win the cup for like the fourth year in a row or something which is going to be interesting too so guys if you like what you've seen please drop a like on the video and if you've liked it even more than that please subscribe to my channel for more portsmouth and red star belgrade in your inbox every single day at 5 30 and 8 o'clock and i will see you guys in the next episode for the game against bosdabats look forward to that one Bye bye